What's up, Papi? Unmute. Ah. Am I unmuting? Yeah, you're good now. What's up? What's going on, brother? It's good Ooh. to see you. You too, <laughs> man. <laughs> you know, wow, I told let me tell you. Let me tell you. Don't I told to Kat. I said for the first show of the year, it has to be to Lisi. And so I go. But he's so busy. I don't know if he's gonna be able to do it. And she Thank goes, you. she's like, bro, he's gonna say yes. And I said, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. So I put it out there and and shit, you said yes right away. And I was like, stop playing. Happy New Year. <laughs> Honestly, I was waiting. Happy what? New Year. Honestly, I was waiting because I was like. You know, we had a whole year last year. All right. I see you, yeah. Papi. I see you. So when you hit me up, I was like, yes, I'll do it. Yes, yes. So no, we have to be in it. No, yes. it and the same yes. thing. When I first did this, you were my first choice. You could ask her. But I was afraid. I was like, this guy's all over the place. There's no way I'm going to be able to get him in time. And I was like, oh, he, he's, he's going to. And I was like, at a point, I, I had just got um turned down from a bunch of um. What do you call that? Submissions. And I was like, I can't take another rejection right now. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I'm gonna um gonna wait a bit. Let me see. <laughs> let me let him let me let, I still remember the first time <laughs> I met you at a show. It was kind of like an American Idol type thing, but but you were like a judge and you didn't we didn't know each other. <clears throat> and I was at this point where I, I took a break from poetry, but before that, everybody wanted to hear me and everybody was like always clapping and shit and then that day I got up there I didn't have anything I actually did like a rhyming thing and then and I got these applause and you go it was okay <laughs> and I was like yes and then you said you better you can't no you need to slow down <laughs> and I was like thank you and, and well, I was that a, that, um, <laughs> mental sense you <clears throat> yes yes Oh my God! Was it the event yeah. that Metal Sins did? Yeah, that. Yep, that's when it was. I remember that. Yeah, and and it was. And I, remember you, I remember that. One of the that. best advice I ever got was slow down, and and and, and absolutely. And, and, so anyway, let me let let me get, let me introduce you. Shit, I got into. I'm I'm so close to you, and I love you so much. I just got into absolutely into chopping yeah. it up. But uh, all right, so. Uh, Tulisi, award-winning actor, star of the hugely popular one-man show produced by Felix Rojas, Growing Up Gonzalez, and star of sold-out one-man show, I'm Just Saying, author of Slips, Trips, and Falls, a collection of personal essays and poetry, and head vibe records, house music recording artist, the chulo that takes it easy, Andre Tulisi Rodriguez. My going on. Yes. No. Yeah, let me tell you. I, 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 every time I think of you and Cat, I'm like Chicago, my second home. Ugh. Oh God, you need love to come Chicago. stay with us for a minute. I, I'm a, I'm a I love Chicago. I better go out there. Um, there's a lady yeah. out there by the name of Marianne who has a big, huge theater that she's building out there, and she's been. Yeah. Me and her have been like uh, talking, and she wants to put up. I'm just saying up there, so I'm feeling for the summer to go up there. Absolutely. And you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm always here for you, and I, and and 
Thank I, you. It's a couple of things. Is we got to get your audio book going. So, you know, I got a few people asking me to do that for them, and I'm like, all right, wait a minute. But when you come here, you're gonna you're gonna stay <laughs> for you're gonna stay for like at least two days, and we're gonna get this audio book done. And, and absolutely. Yeah, you know, I am so with it. You know, that's the next thing. It's funny you mentioned that. That's the next thing that I want to do, an audio book. Mm -hmm. So funny you bring it up. So that's my first confirmation. That's a good thing. thing. So, I mean, we're going to get into a lot of past, um, present, and future. But tell me who Chulisi is today. Uh, He's frozen today. (laughs) <laughs> you can see me now i can, can see, see me you now. frozen but i can hear you am i still freezing you're freezing but it's kind of cool because it's kind of like all your acting faces <laughs> okay well at least I hope there I you go there pose. you go <laughs> oh. <laughs> um okay so um who am i now let me tell you, I've gone through a lot of changes. COVID, um, unfortunately, um, gave me the illest anxiety that I've ever had in my entire life. So I've learned to be a lot more calmer. I've learned to be, um, I don't let things get to me like they used to. Like, you know, like a lot of people bug out, you know, they come at me a certain way and I just smile and be like, that's cool. You know, I'm yeah. very calm. I'm a much into more of the writing than I was ever before. Um, mm-hmm. Things have opened up for me. Um, and what's coming up for this year is oof, for the first time I can say I'm actually scared of going back on stage. So, really, well, I remember uh, we were just like talking about this, uh, me and Kat, uh, with my son because he got nervous uh, for um, a Christmas show, and we said, uh, you know what, you know what, Chelsea told us, um, the day you're no longer afraid is the day you can stop doing this. <laughs> Absolutely. And I still believe that. I hear that from so many people as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You always have to be scared. because that's the excitement. That's the um, putting yourself in an uncomfortable position to be at your best, you know what I mean? So yeah. it kills me. The other day, um, last month I did a show and, and um, it was me and two more other poets who were backstage just talking jiving. And one of the, uh, in my head, I was like, you must. And just as I said, honey, he got up there and he forgot all his words. Or, and I was yeah. like, that's what you get for not being nervous, bro. Overconfidence nice. is a killer too. So yeah, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I still get nervous every time, man. Every time, every time. I, I can tell you oh that my is God, the so. The dry mouth, the, the jitters. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, so, I, I mean, Anybody who's read your book knows a lot. Um, like I know a lot about where you came from, but not everybody read it. Not everybody knows a lot. So what influenced you to become an actor? No, that wasn't your first thing. We'll get, we'll get into that later. But what, what influenced you to become no. an actor? Um, acting was actually by accident. I, I was hanging out at the Palladium at the time. For nobody who knows that, Palladium was this club in, in New York City, a very famous club. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a writer there. And he watched me for like every Saturday I would go there and I would just dance because that's all I had left was just dancing. I just got out of a rehab and I was really trying to stay clean. And um, on the third night, he just came to me and he gave me a script. And he was like, um, do you act? And I was like, no. And he says, you know what? I want you to try out for this character. It's called um, Zima. And it was a drag queen, and uh, you know, I did it. God, we lost two two for a minute. Let's see if we get them back. I see you, but I don't hear you. Wait, there we are. You're can you hear me now? now? Yeah. So he gave you a script, and it was okay. called, and then you got cut off. Oh, so he gave me a script. Um, it was to play this character called Maxima. And um, I gave it a try. I, I, I really gave it a try because I gave up singing and I gave up dancing for a while because I was still trying to get clean. And one thing led to another and I've been working ever since acting. I've been going on nice. 25 years nonstop. 
I like I like so uh there's a part in your book where you talk about um um going to a, a, some kind of theater classes and uh and and you say in your head you always pictured fame <laughs> like like in your perfect world everybody would be singing like fame <laughs> I'm breaking out into song and dance I was like that would be really fucking great yeah yeah unfortunately it wasn't but I in my head it still exists that world still exists in my head I want you to know that yeah. what's your what's your the past <laughs> that would be awesome by the way and it would stop a lot of fights <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> what's your process for rehearsing a scene your personal process i think one of the biggest things that people bug out on i cannot learn a script if i don't have classical music playing in the background really to have classical music it can't be anything with vocals because it'll distract me so i literally put on like mozart violin pieces those kind of pieces sonatos mm -hmm. and i let it play and it helps me actually learn the words with poetry with scripts with yeah. marks it's the only way i learn if i don't have the distraction because as the um as the pieces are playing I try to home in on the pieces, but that kind of helps me with just in case I'm saying something and I have like someone who's loud in the audience or if I get thrown off, how do I fall back in? And it helps me. The biggest thing is classical music. I've been doing that since I started. And that makes so much sense because when you're watching a movie, right? So they figured out that, that a classical um, background music helps the scene, helps you feel more that energy. Wow. And I've never heard anybody say that. You just gave up your secret. I, I, I don't know if we should have, maybe I'll edit that out. One. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Tell me, um, who do you consider a role model when it comes to acting? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Oh my God, that is the most easy answer for me. Um, normal people or a TV star? Which one are you asking me? Whatever is the whatever. When it comes to that part of your your artistry, because you do a lot of things, you wear crazy hats. But yeah. when it comes to acting, who would be your role model? Marilyn Torres. Hmm. Hands down. And why? Marilyn Torres is a New York actress, actor. Um, she is a beast at one woman shows. I like uh, I've never seen someone do eight to nine characters in front of your face in transition with nothing, just one outfit. They do it with their body and their voice. She is a and, and like you. Beast. She, I'm gonna tell you who's a beast. With it, her name is Alan Torres. She needs to know. Her last play was um. I'm trying to I'm trying to predict his when his screen freezes. <laughs> when your screen freezes, <laughs> I'm trying to fill in the the blanks. And I'm there. right in the living room where the Wi-Fi is at. Is doing this. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not understanding. Your your any other your... day would be great. Today it's done. <laughs> Your your one man shows are amazing, and and I remember um the one that you did. I think it was called the one hundred eight bar. You. I don't I don't know if you remember that one, but you you did a scene that to me was oh so, my god yes 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 it was, I remember yeah, that I cried. It was uh, we were there with Maria Ponte was there, and we were and 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 to uh, and I don't honestly um. Oh my god. I felt yeah, like I have a was, picture of that. I have a picture of all of you. Yeah, I thought you. It was a part that it sounded like you were. Um, you did a scene that was that made me think of Alviso Campos electrocuting electric the way they electrocuted him, and um, yeah, yeah, and and I and that whole scene brought me to tears, and and um, and I was that was after. I already saw that, like that, um, that leg was that leg was Zamo piece, and um, and I thought, um, fuck, leg was Zamo because <laughs> this guy, 
this guy is it, man. This is where, man, I, I was like, I want to see more of you, you know, and, and, and that's comedy. And then you are, you do some funny bits too. I like, I like the thug um, and the closet one, you know, and. Oh, you're muted. Let me, let me, let me see about. You got to unmute yourself, puppy. Yourself. I did. I did. I unmuted myself. Yes. Um, that play was actually written again from um, Felix Rojas, who actually wrote Growing Up Gonzalez. Right, right. And he came up with that concept because he wanted he, one of the characters from Growing Up Gonzalez, and he had a backstory. Right, right. And when he gave it to me, I was like, please, we got to bring this to life because everybody's asking these certain questions. And he made a play of that whole, that play was that particular character that filled yeah. in the gaps from the ah, two brothers. Yeah, yeah. That and we only amazing. performed it that one day. We never went back. Really? And yeah. And when you do a scene, like it's like poetry, you, I could write a poem and it means something to me, but it'll mean something else to a lot of other people to be able to do that with acting, to be able to do yes. a scene and, and it yes. moves people in different ways. I found that so amazing that day that I was, I was blown away, man. So the whole show was great, but that one scene where, I mean, it just makes sense. I know I'm a poet, so I speak silly, but you cried with your heart on stage. Yes. I, I, and, you, know what <laughs> you know what it is? I don't believe in, grabbing a role mm -hmm. that I can't relate to at one level or that it is speaking about where I'm at mentally as a person. Yeah, yeah. What would you say? If it was doesn't your... have that, it won't do it. Yeah. Because there's no connecting with me and whatever they're writing. Absolutely. Ah. I can't do it. Bless I can't do it. Jules, Jules, drop them. <laughs> yes, you. Yeah, you go. I'm always <laughs> Gems, I, you know, it, what? when I got into this industry, I didn't have a lot of people that dropped gems. You know, they mm -hmm. pretty much let you swim and find your way. You know what I mean? And I always said that if I ever get to a certain pinnacle, I always want to just give people gems so that it can make their journey yeah. a little better. Because if you're meant to shine, you're going to shine. And if I can help you shine, yo, I'm with, I'm with all of that. Always been. You and me both came up in a time where it was hustling. You had a you had a hustle for everything that was uh, for me for the 80s, 89, 88, you know, um, going into the promoters, the, 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 the promoters of the Roxy and Palladium and Limelight. And, and mm -hmm. you no, know, you got to hustle your way in there. And I was on acid at the time. So <laughs> it was even harder. <laughs> Sell yourself. What was your most challenging? Yeah, ditto, ditto. I, can, I absolutely let me tell you, I identify. You had to sell yourself back in the days. You know, Absolutely. you couldn't just be cute. Like, you really had to have <laughs> talent. You couldn't be cute and auto-tune will take care of you. Mm -hmm. um, and you couldn't be a great dancer with a great body and just barely sing. No, like, if you sang, you had to sing. If you That'd danced, work, you man. had to dance. If you can write, you had to write. There was yes, none of that yes. cute stuff. That, like, like, now, anybody could be a star. It drives me crazy. <laughs> when I hear I, well, I'll be like, how the hell did he get a deal? What was that? Oh my god, it drives me crazy. I can't. Yeah, now it's uh, well, it's who you know, and it, it is. It's it's you don't have to work as hard anymore, which I, I you mean, you really don't. What would you say was your most challenging role? My one man show. I'm just saying. Yeah. You I know remember. why? Because I was one of the things that I wrote that was actually bare butt naked emotionally for me. It was hard. Your mom, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the mom stuff. And then um, the, the poem with my sister. Woo! Mm. I couldn't get through it. I was like, well, Jesus Christ, I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> mentioned that in your book, too. You know, um, <clears throat> I remember that day because we had, I, I believe it was a clip of your mom singing. And I then we think of that. And I then we had think a of that, technical right? difficulty, right? Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't go on. And I was like, fuck. And you But I'm happy it did it. You know what I always say about that? that? I, I say to myself, thank God that that clip didn't play because if I would have heard my mother singing, yeah. I would have just died on that. I, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I mean, what? as an actor, I would have I just would have been done. I would have been like, and the show is over. <laughs> but you know what you. though? I'm gonna tell you this. There's a there's a there's artists that at that when a situation like that comes up it's over 
and they don't know yeah. what to do and they yeah. don't know how to pick themselves back up again. You didn't even wait for, is this going to work? You looked at yeah. me and I don't know how you knew that I wasn't going to get this going, but you picked it up right back and you did it yourself. Absolutely. And, you, <laughs> and I was Absolutely. like, that's, oh, that's one God. of the things that Marilyn Torres taught me. Marilyn uh-huh. Torres, um, I did my first play with her and, and, and me and her used to share a dressing room and she says, whatever you do, the audience will never, never know unless you let them know. And I was yes. and I stood with that always in my head. And she was like, they never know. Remember mm-hmm. that. And I was like, okay, they'll never know. <laughs> yeah. When I tell, when I have a poet that is nervous, I tell them, take either the first line of your poem or the closing line, just remember that because when you're stuck, you're going to just put that out there like and end it. (laughs) We're done. Absolutely. (laughs) It's of the trade. And you can only know that through experience. Yes, yes. Well, you act, you dance, you recite spoken word, you sing, you direct. I mean, which which of the, soon you're going to be painting and I'm going to be out of a job. But which came first? (laughs) And how did you transition through all that? Like, like, how did it string through all that? It was on accident, believe it or not. Um, mm. When I first started in the industry, I was a dancer. I danced back up for a lot of freestyle. Um, again, we're showing our age, freestyle music. Um, <laughs> danced back up for a lot of the freestyle artists. Then um, I came back up. Um, I was just singing in the dressing room, and then one of them was like, you record. And then I found out that I can sing. And then when I went away to the rehab, I wanted to leave the industry just to get clean. And that's mm-hmm. when the acting came in and it saved me. And then from acting, um, I started writing a lot of my thoughts. And um, I remember that I took the workshop, Writing Our Lives with Vanessa Martier. And um, she said something so profound to me. She says, um, she asked the class, how many people keep a diary? And I've always kept the diary since I was a little kid. I, I mean, nice. I kept the diary since I could have both senses. And if you can bring them to life, good food, because we need a voice. And that's how I started putting my writing, my experiences into my one-man shows. So yes. the whole process coming along was just, you know, spirit kind of guiding me and opening the yeah. door and hitting me at the right time for me to go to the next piece, to the next piece, to the next piece. Yeah. 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 And you were and Definitely. You, yeah, I've been blessed, man. When you were singing freestyle, you know, it's funny because I re- I have that moment like you talk about in your book where um, my mom, she was just kept telling me, be an engineer. Be- I don't even know what I, I didn't even know what she meant because I didn't know what an engineer was. I was like, you want me to drive trains? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? But she did not like think my art was going to go anywhere. My nothing. She was like, that's all fun and play. Go get a job, <laughs> you know? So when you, but, when you talk, when you talk about how she heard you sing in, in the church and then, and then afterwards she was like, sing for me. And, and yo, that was a beautiful moment. I will never forget that. That yeah. was, and I sang on a Lupe song. I will never yeah. forget that. El David. I will never, for, we still sing that one song together. Which one, which one was it? Because uh, I, it was La Lupe song. Um, Mm-hmm. She would cover my mouth and be like, do it again. Yeah. Now do it with feeling. Oh, she's, yeah. You don't ever sing if you don't ever put emotion behind anything. Otherwise, you're just rehearsing. And I'm like, okay. She, okay, mom. And she was one of the most emotional singer ever. Like, she ever. did, when she did, um, you you bring me fever with her accent and fuck you I don't care this is how I sound you're gonna love it and she breathed through that shit and they went into the that step. A great song what? one of my favorite versions yeah. yes 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 so the then you then I mean here's what's yep. crazy absolutely believe that yeah you can you you do your your acting gets serious you 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 can be uh and then I mean you you sang freestyle you do house now but you had the loose control TV. And one of my favorite scenes yeah. <laughs> was the uh, Santeros. <laughs> oh, my you remember God. That Let me tell you, With the- that ended up, <laughs> I didn't know that that ended up on a big Santero website. Really? I so I go to a Botanica one day, and we're <laughs> online, and this guy turns around, and he goes on the line, oh, my God. 
And I looked up and I'm like, what is he talking about? He was like, you, you. And I was like, oh my God, they're talking about that fucking thing. Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> it still haunts me. I still have people who see me I'm in the circle. You. They're like, but it's got me a lot. <laughs> was that, was that improv or, or, or are you a writ? Cause that was one of the most A lot fun- of it, um, um, we wrote it, but I allowed me and Rina Valentin Mm-hmm. I told her, just go with your actions. I don't want to micromanage what you're going to act. I'll, I'll react right. to you. So all the <laughs> acting you see, the physical, that's all improv. Yeah, yeah. All of that is improv. That 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 is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, if yeah if definitely. Oh God, I hope it's still... Is it, I forgot about that. <laughs> is it still up there? Because people have to check that out. It's one of the yeah, yeah, it's still up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um... Like <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, now, here's what a lot of people don't know about. Um, <laughs> tell me about about um, the House of Xavier when you were when you were um, mother. <laughs> mother Xavier, the mother of the House of Xavier. <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Yes. That looked like like ballroom. Um, like beauty, like it was glitter, like it was, it was like it was like it was boring. Like, um, you, you, it was like what's going on now, right? And like, and it's huge now, right? But it looks like like back then it was just popping up here and there. We were taking um the 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 LGBTQ community were taking back house, um. Because yes. it got it got a little commercial. Yes. It went it got well, once it hit London, it came back all all crazy. It wasn't deep anymore, you know. And 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 right. and, and, right. and then it was like we, we need to have this back. I used to go to this, you know. I always think I, I swear we probably were in the same room. There was this beautiful. It was more not. It was more like a dance joint than a club, but it was on a hundred and something um, on the east side, hundred and eight, hundred and six, uh, second floor. And it was a huge mix of gay and straight people together all the time, like rocking it was like out. A loft. It was a loft, yes. But I don't remember the name. Of I it. think I know what you're talking about. And it about was 106. Yes, 106. Oh man, I love that spot. And I was like, you know what? The people that used to dance there were amazing. Now, now people were breaking at that time, right? And then there was this dance that the gay community was doing that was light breaking. And it would be like if you spin a quarter and it just like starts to flip and it's like a cartwheel sideways. And it was, it was I know like, about. yeah, yes. and that was, it was the most amazing thing. And to see that mixed with, um, with uh, hip hop people in peace was a beautiful thing because hip hop was very homophobic. Right. And, 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 and at that time, that was one of me and my sister's favorite places where we would get the Snoopy stamps. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, and then we stopped going there because, you it was, know, I think that, that, that ever about... he's freezing. Cause he's cool. Just so you guys I think know. That era you... <laughs> um, I, that era that you're talking about, there was one time. I think it lasted like three or four years where hip hop and house was so entwined on the dance floors. Where mm. it was so easy to see people voguing and adding hip hop elements. Yes. All you know what I mean? The vogue. And it happened just like for two or three years and then the separation. You know, the vogue was this and then house music oh, was that and then hip hop was there, you know? But as at I one time, one of my people in the late name... 80s, very early 90s. Yes, yes. absolutely. I had um, a. Well, I used to be. Did you do Mother that? to the house of Xavier. Yes, yes. Tell me about that experience, though, because that looks like I would have loved to be. The reason I brought up that oh, 106. You, you definitely would have been. Uh, uh, <sighs> Emmanuel Xavier um, wanted to create a house. He wanted to bring spoken word and the poetry scene as a union. Mm-hmm. So he invented the balls, and I became the mother of the house. So we had balls like... Um, Best love poem in mm-hmm. Fire Engine Red. So the Vogue, the ball part was coming in, in an extravagant outfit in Fire Engine Red. And then right. the spoken word was what piece are you going to present in that? So we had categories like that. And we had about two or three balls. They were very, yeah. very big. I mean, they, they were, were they, sold they out. Were, 
Thanks. And you were you were glamorous, man. I saw the hair, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The long hair. It, it, I was mother. I was mother. Yeah, I had yes. to be mother. I had to be, you know, Miss Mother. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, I would have, absolutely. I would have loved and, and, and the reason yeah, I brought yeah, up the, um, the reason I brought up the 106 was because as beautiful as that was, when I look at like pictures of, of and there's not many um of, of the house of Xavier, but when I look at and I see if, some pictures, it looks like if you Wonderland. If you actually I found it, it's a little hard. If you actually Google a show called Homo Visiones. Mm -hmm. It comes up with a catalog in Hunter College. Hunter College has the catalog. And in that mm -hmm. catalog, they actually have one whole entire ball of me oh, and Manny. Oh, man. Nice, nice. Oh, great. I saw those pictures of me. I said the first thing I said was, oh, my God, you were so thin. Yeah. And let me tell you, only, only really, only really, uh, only people that Manny loves can call him Manny. <laughs> <laughs> so you know <laughs> and when you yeah yeah, we, yeah. Once, um, um, <laughs> the people in that ball were up and coming poets at the time la bruja mm -hmm. started there uh suher hamad started mm -hmm. there it, 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 we had a lot of great poets oh yeah oh yes. yeah oh yeah and then, oh yeah they would we would use they would be in our house and they would open up the category mm -hmm. when you you were your parents creative um or did they enjoy the arts or music to the point that it was a staple in your home i know that your mom sang right we, yeah we, my we mom like, there was always music my mother actually can't sing and so this day she still can hold the note at her old age mom always sang her dream was to be a singer but because she was grew up in puerto rico no barrio, mm -hmm. Ibarita, she never had that opportunity you know, my brother was uh, just like you. He was a, an amazing break dancer. Mm -hmm. He did his thing. He had his little group and they toured as well. Yeah. And then there was me. And I didn't and come into mine until late. I didn't come into bring right. my gift until whoop, I was like 16, 17. And you didn't learn about your mom <laughs> wanting to be, that like she wanted to be a singer till later. Much later. Yes, when I got clean. Yeah. Because when I wanted to be a singer, Everybody in my family was like yours, like, oh no, you should go to college and get something better. What? But nobody makes money off of singing. But I noticed my mom would never say anything. And my mom had a habit that whenever I went out to the clubs on Friday or Saturday nights, she would stay up when I would come home. And then one night she was feeling nice, you know? And um, she walked in and she called me. She said, I want to talk to you. And then she asked me, you know, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I want to perform. And she was like, I wanted to perform too. And then she told me that, you know, when she was yeah. younger, she wanted to perform. She wanted to be this. And then that's how it led to her. Mm -hmm. Do what you want to do, but please get a backup. You never know. And that's when I, you know, I still went to college and I did what I had to do, but I always went for my dream. Like mom was always yeah. like, do it. Behind and everybody's I'm... back, she'd be like, go, go. <laughs> Anybody who hasn't read um, Slips, Trips and Falls, right? You have to read it because one thing you're going to learn um, you look at Ulysses, right? And you think um, he's got it all together. You might think he's so good that he was a natural, right? Life was his was his muse. He had um, his, I mean, even the bad, the good, the bad, the, his mom, his sister, all these things that affected him um, in his life, those were teachers. And, and from when I'm reading it, I'm like, you know, those are things that kind of built you and, and made you who you are today, you know, and, and I think it's important for people. I'm, I'm trying to get I'm, I love to get to know some parts of you that people ne don't know about. But there's a lot of you Absolutely, in there. Absolutely, 100 know? So I know people don't um, don't know a lot because like, the 80s is, is like gone and they don't know that it was hard. It was hard. Um, I'm, I, I can speak for me, but me and my people Absolutely. that I know about, it was hard to get clean because our drugs were so pretty. <laughs> I mean, the um, the 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 double barrels, the the red stars, the Snoopy stamps, the um, the Buddha, all that stuff was all over the place, you know. And and it was pretty. <laughs> yeah, and, the double barrels. <laughs> people don't understand. People don't 
don't understand that it's a death sentence. To be openly gay, you automatically put yourself out there. It, it, 50, 50 oh, yeah. you come home because homophobia was rapid. Oh, yeah. You can pass by a cut back in the day on the corners. You were passed by a corner of five fucking members, gold blocks, and other gang members. And me being gay, I mean, I was always, I was never in the closet. My mom never looked at it that way. I was never in the closet. I knew I was gay since I was six years old. So I was in junior high school wearing flash dance shirts, tights, uh, uh, you know, mm-hmm. ruffle socks. I was out and loud, you know, and, and I had to walk the streets. And that's how I learned, you know, to have hands. Because back in the days, if you didn't have hands, baby, yeah. you, were, mm, you wasn't going to be too too much on the streets, boy. That's for sure. You know, and people don't understand that. Yeah, people be like, why are you so tough? I'm like, you had to be. Yeah. You couldn't be I was, soft. I was going to ask you that if you were bullied as a kid. I mean, you just answered it, but you. you I, I was. I was bullied. I was bullied, which is why I fought a lot. Then it got to a point where I made a promise the minute someone says the word, you know, the derogatory mm-hmm. word, punch him in the face, whether you're going to win or not. You know <laughs> what I mean? And that's how I ended up getting hands. I was fighting every day. I was like, oh, word. And if I won, I won. If I didn't, I yes. didn't. But they never bothered me again. You yeah, know, you know, the bullying diff- stopped when I got to high school. Yeah. That's when it stopped. It's a different world because, like, okay, I, I was, I, I'm now telling my son, yo, don't fight. You know, you got to, speak to someone right my mother was like you didn't hit him <laughs> my mom would be like somebody hits you you better hit him back you know and she yeah. a matter of fact you better know how to duck because it shouldn't hit you once they swing <laughs> you hit him back you know my very world. first fight my very first fight was my mom my mom <laughs> came up to me and she said i'm tired of you crying you're gonna go back there <laughs> You're going to fight him, and if you lose, I'm going to beat your ass. You know I won that fight, because my mother was going to beat my ass. I was more scared of my mother than a guy. I was like, dah, 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 dah. no, you know, and my mother always said, you don't let nobody abuse you, Andre. Don't be a bully, but don't let nobody abuse you. Yeah, she had me and my friend fight. She was like, I had enough. Fight. I was like, what? She was like, fight or fight me. I was like, all <laughs> right, bro, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and so we fought, and then she goes, now shake hands. Yeah. Shake yep. hands. Yep. Let's go. Exactly Come eat. Let's go eat. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 After I fought him, my mother took both of us to the store and got us potato chips. Be friends <laughs> now. Yeah. No more. What What, what moved definitely. you to, to finally put that book out? And and like, because it's, it's, it's really open heart therapy in there. It's like really... You, you're bearing your soul. I know there's a lot more year. to tell. There's a lot more to tell. I, I, oh, yeah. I, I know I'm that. Working on my second, I'm working on two books now that should be nice. done in the next, like in another three months. But um, taking Vanessa's class inspired me to write mm. it, man. Vanessa Martier, I think, is one of the most important voices when it comes to teaching people who come from my background, from the streets. Mm. I think she's such a voice for us <coughs> to write. Like she's with it. She's like, yo, don't ask permission to write. Just write, bro. Absolutely. Don't ask permission to. And always remember, you're always gonna say your side of the story. Don't don't worry about anybody else's side. If they're interested, let them write their their, their version of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I that think inspired me. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna write my because because my stepfather read my book and he yeah. didn't like it. He was like, it is all a lie. I was well, like, of course it's gonna be a lie for oh, you, sir. Exactly. <laughs> That's not your version exactly. of the story. My mother said the same thing. I, I came out of the bathroom once and she's in the in the living room with her homemaker crying. And she goes, why you wrote this? And she's sharing it with her. And I'm like, that's not true. And I'm like, it's so fucking true. But but she is like, and back, the I don't know, maybe it still goes on. Latino moms just shit ain't for the public. <laughs> she's like, that stays in the sala. That's true. <laughs> Right, right, <laughs> right, right. My stepfather, I think I think that was the one time I ever seen my stepfather read a book. Like he literally read yeah. the whole book cover to cover and then walked in. We were having dinner and he was like, You sell this to the public? I'm like, Yeah. He goes, You know it's a lie. I was like, To you. Yeah. And I'm okay with that, sir. I'm okay with that. You know what but I mean? You had that and, in you and for again, so long. Vanessa Martier gave me the uh, the hoods for to do that. You know what to I mean? To do it because you were you had the stories. You, but here's the thing though, it had to it had to hurt. because I know for me, there's stories that hurt me if I don't release them. 
you know, I, I finally I finally wrote in the last book, I wrote something that was really about a rape in my life. Right. And just to re- and, I, and let me tell you, I haven't released a lot because there's still some stuff I, like I know that oh, you yeah. have more. I know I'm waiting for it, <laughs> but I'm like, I have stories that I'm not ready to release yet because I can't my pen won't do it like I can't yet. Like, you know, what? I'm happy you said that. I'm happy you said that because as a director, lots of times, you know, I go to places to be, you know, the up and coming, the, you know, the new, like I see the new voices out there. <clears throat> and I don't think anyone is telling them sometimes not everything you write is meant to be said, baby. Right, right. Not every poem is meant to be a spoken word piece. Mm-hmm. Some shit you just need to write to release keep it to yourself, mm-hmm. chew it a little bit let it do what it do, and then come back and edit it. Because you have to have a mature voice of experience in order to say half the things you want to say sometimes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Look at that. And uh, speaking of that, so you you also, you you directed with the full circle. I don't know if that was your first, I doubt it, um, directing experience. But for me, being a part of that, it was amazing. And then you did uh, In Defense of Glitter and Rainbows with True Rodriguez. So how does how do you feel when you're directing? Does it is glitter it and same? rainbows written by True Rodriguez? Yes. Yeah. Do you feel the same thrill yeah. as when Those you're acting? Those experiences were. Say it again. Do you feel the same? Is it the passion for directing? Is it how it's similar or different it is from acting or singing or the other things that you do? It's completely different. For me to direct, I have to actually not be the actor. Yes. I can't. I have to be just ears because I have to allow the actors to bring to life their version of what they're uh-huh. reading. Because I'm going to do it my way. And I'll be like, ah, yeah. okay, this is how you see it. And then I know. Have, to, have to bring out the best of what they bring into the tape. You do. It's and hard then you, sometimes. It is. <laughs> it's hard because it's like, it's it's not everybody wants to do what you want them to do. Uh, I know I, I I it was hard for me when you told me to... um to slow down and and it's not you know it was like i told you i was at a point where nobody told me i was not good so when you first told me it's not good i was like what the fuck man and i was like and and then i you know i i tried and i was like is she he's right you gotta slow down you're like a machine gun and 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 then um i just kept trying and trying and then you told me to do um these facial expressions that I was fighting and I was like, but I'm not an actor. See, in my mind, I felt like if I was doing a facial expression, it wasn't coming across to people. Like, right. cause, cause I was so, I had the imposter syndrome. So I feel like I'm not good enough. So I feel like if I think I'm looking mean, I'm not like, I'm thinking right. I feel that, but the audience doesn't see right. that. But I listened to you and I did that full circle show and I watched the video and I do this this lip twist that you told me to do when when sins comes out and i and and i was like holy fuck that looked good <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't chulisi type good <laughs> but it was pretty good acting and i was like i was like oh that looked like that scene that scene reminded me of juice the end of juice when he went when when tupac was like yes yes, <laughs> yes, I, was like, yes I was like that yes, was nice yes. and i was and i was always thankful for you yes. for that day so it's like so definitely, now you have people definitely. like me who who were fighting, you know, like, and a lot of times you got to know that they're not fighting because they don't believe in you because they don't believe in themselves. That's my story, but like they right. don't believe in themselves and you have to, you have to deal with that as a director and chisel through all that shit to get to their, you know, core. You know what it is? It all goes back to we, how we see ourselves is not how the world sees us. Mm. So I have to play mirror with you yeah, and find the best part of you that the mirror can hold. And lots of actors, a lot of spoken word artists, when you give them a direction, they'll fight it because in their mind, especially spoken word artists, Mm -hmm. most of the time that we're doing our pieces, we're doing them in our head. We're not in front of a mirror. That's not who we are. Right, right. We write the piece, we study it on the sofa. We write it in the bedroom, we study it in the bedroom. We're not up walking, you know, doing all of this that actors do. So we don't really get a chance to really see ourselves yeah. in the mirror and say, this is what I look like. 
So you know, you, you give a spoken word artist a certain direction, it's breaking them out of the routine. And you know, you of them told, writing their piece. You know what I mean? You told us to look in the mirror too, and and do the thing. And I'm gonna tell you, that was a time. I didn't like myself. I didn't like looking at myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't look in mirrors. I hated mirrors. I was. Wow. Like, I found myself ugly, and I was like, um, I'm at a point where I love my scars. I love my weight. I love everything about myself, you know. And and I, I it wasn't. I, and I'm old, man. I'm 55, so it took me a while to get here, you know. But absolutely. But at that time, when you were directing, I was like, I can't look in the mirror. So um, I was uh, I was like fighting it, and I waited till I was alone. I looked in the mirror and tried it. Yo, I cried, man. <laughs> I was like, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I kept coming back and like, until I could finally keep looking at myself. It, it, it was, a pain, oh, yeah. you know, but I thank you for all that experience. Cause it was, it was amazing. But, um, thank you. yeah, man. I, I mean, you, you're teaching. I know, um, it's not, you, you have a lot going on in your life. Um, but your workshops, if you start doing them again, people need to um, experience that. So, yeah, I'm going to go back to that. Yeah. 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 Now, um, you have been doing some house tracks lately. Tell me about that, because I know that's, that's kind of good. I remember when, when you were I actually interviewed you before for our news newsletter once. And, yes. uh, and you said and I asked you, what is it you want to do? next and you said music i want to get back into music and you did it man it's like this guy i'm like this motherfucker says he's gonna do something and he does it and you are Yo, such an inspiration tell me that all the time you're my friend <laughs> you're the only person i know that says you're gonna do something and you fucking do it bro yeah let me tell you spirit has played a major part in my life mm-hmm. from the day i got clean i wanted to do music and I had woken up that day and I was like, damn man, I want to sing a house track so bad. Head by Head Records is run by Isaac, um, Eyes One Isaac and David Cruz. Mm-hmm. Isaac, I knew since I was like 16, 17, I would go to his house and just sing. He staked all those tracks, Dave. Wow. So that day I wake up in the morning and out of the blue, I get a text from Isaac, Eyes One. He says, yo, check out my Facebook post. So I said, and I haven't heard from him in years, but we still had each other's number. He texts me. Right, right. I go to Facebook. He had taken one of the vocals that I did when I was 19 years old and did a record. Yes. <laughs> and then he, I called him back up and I was like, bro, what the fuck? Oh, shit. <laughs> and he says, yo, you ready to go back? I was like, and you did it. You went back. And he did it. And I'm singing. It's a Spanish house. So, um, uh, Ponte, uh, Sante Tupa Mate Medio. Mm-hmm. That's the name of the song. Nice. Where we mix it with So, you got a lot. Of, you yeah. actually got a lot. That one is an EP. You got some spiritual ones. You got, you got a, I mean, Got some. <laughs> you got an eight minute joint. <laughs> I haven't seen eight minute joints since the 80s. Right? <laughs> that takes me back to the limelight right there. Right there. Absolutely takes me back, man. So, oh, we lo- we um we lost you again. So I hope I hope I get to um I hope, hope you I get, get back you. on. There you um, go. There you are. Hope there you, you get are. Back on. There you. Today you've been a real magician. Oh my you've god! Come, you've, been disappear- <laughs> you've been disappearing. And oh, I was playing one of your songs, and then you and then you got you disappeared. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> <laughs> I played a little bit of your okay. a song. I said, I said you got an eight minute house track. I said I haven't I haven't seen eight minute tracks since the eighties. I was like, yes, awesome. <laughs> Yo, right. Yes, that was um. <coughs> excuse me, aquí, aquí voy yo. Yes, yes, nice, nice. Oh, yeah. that, that, that's me and Isaac, and, and again, that that was him calling me in. He says, 
Sing whatever you feel like singing. And I'm like, da 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 ba 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 da 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 And he sings all of that. And I'm yes. like, guess what? Like, vocals. And I was like, how? I didn't know you was recording me. He goes, I always record you. You always got something to say, bro. Absolutely. That's how I got you. That's I <laughs> know. I knew that fucking hell. I was like, uh, I, I remember everything. when you sent me the track, I was like, oh, shit. How did he get that? You gotta save everything. I don't even remember. And I was like, wow, you saved it. You know, of all the things that you want to do in life, right? I know what really is love to me is how you go on TikTok pretty much every day and and selflessly give advice to other people. And it's basically on on their on loving themselves and being there for themselves and and like you do it like it's a mission, like. What drove you to start yes. that? I mean, I'm so happy for that. Like to wake up in the morning and say, I gotta, I gotta see this this, this six o'clock, um, six a.m. message from Julie C. You know, six in the morning. <laughs> Sometimes you're in your bed. Six in the morning. <laughs> you got a shower cap on. <laughs> you like, I got a message to tell. Fuck this. Okay. <laughs> you know what it is? I wish. And this is something I always kind of play with myself in my head. I wonder how amazing <clears throat> I would have turned out if as a kid, I had someone like me in my like life. That. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would have avoided so many pitfalls. I would have avoided so many obstacles. I would have avoided so many heartbreaks. I would have avoided so many putting myself in risky situations for the sake of loving myself or thinking that I loved myself. Yes. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to put that advice out there because if I'm thinking it, that means that somebody needs to hear it. I yes. can't be the only one that went through this. Like impossible. Yes. And the DMs that I get, let me tell you, David, I read some DMs that I've been in tears. Yes. Was I was just going to ask you that. Woman, there was a woman that DMed me that there was a woman who sent me a DM who was in an abusive relationship, mm -hmm. domestic DV, and she hit me and she was like, your last TikTok inspired me to get up in the middle of the night and leave with my son. And I'm on the road right now. Yeah. And I'm under witness protection. But I want to yeah. tell you truly, thank you. And I, I, I was in tears. You, I, I was like, oh my God, you know I, mean? I was in tears. Another uh, one guy had called me up um, he DM'd me on TikTok and he was like, um, I stood all night hearing all your messages. You came up on my FYP. So I hit your page and I heard all of your shit. Thank you. Um, I decided not to kill myself. Yes. Thank, you, thank you. So like it's shit like that. And I'm like, how can I stop? Like, no, I'm going to keep on doing this because yo, this is saving lives, man. And I didn't do it for that. I really did it too. Yeah. Show people that you're not the only one that goes through this. And I want you people to know that a guy goes through this, a gay guy goes through this, a Latino mm -hmm. goes through this, a black person goes through this. You're not alone. You know what I mean? But it turned out to be something pretty big. Yeah, you definitely you definitely helped me. I can tell you that. I tell you, um, you know, I, it's it's late in life that I that I started to really love myself, no, like just the way I am, scars and all, right? And um your TikToks really helped me feel that way. Um <laughs> Along with people like uh, Vanessa Chica, um, Mary J. Blige's song, you know, um, Good Morning Gorgeous, I believe it is, you know, uh, um, ah, oh my yo, God. that album was phenomenal. It's things like that. that Good like, Morning like, Gorgeous. Oh, she yeah. Sounds so <laughs> she sounds like a woman, you know, like she's in her yeah. now. And you, and, and then you, um, you mentioned you know, if I'm feeling it, you said if I'm if I'm thinking it, somebody needs to hear it. I remember my padrino Tito Ibaye. He said, he I said to him in the in, in, in the Yemaya festival on the beach, I said, I said, Padre, you know, this guy is so faking it, faking that. And I don't I, I don't like that. He, like he would watch the eyes to see if the pupils are really dilated and stuff. And he would so right. he's like, so he's like, this that was him, he was real serious. He would always look in the eyes. He goes, he goes, Yeah. But you know what? Go get a message anyway, because it's not coming from him. <laughs> he said, he says, any message you get, he might think he's fronting, but it's coming, it's still coming from the Orisha, right? And I feel and, and, so, <laughs> and like what you said right now, you know, like you feel it. It's it's you got a message to tell, it's divine, right? Um, 
and you're not faking it, but you do have a divine message because it's, it's like you said, somebody needs, I needed to hear that. You know, one of the main reasons I really needed to have this conversation with you is to let you know how you affected me in my life and made me a better person. Thank you, man. You no, know, thank you. I, I appreciate thank you. That's, that. That's dope. That's dope, bro. That's 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 real right there. That's real right there. Thank yeah, you so absolutely. much. Absolutely, you're welcome, man. You thank you. Wow. But wow. now, you, now you wow. enjoy. You're enjoying a lot. Like you, you, you've been through a lot. Like me, you know. You you got yourself clean. Like me, you got yourself changed, and you're moving forward. Um, and you're doing the things that you love right now. You ever fear it ending? No, you know why? I think three times within the past three years, I actually went in front of my orishas, went in front of my old son. I said, listen, I'm old. I'm getting tired. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. So show me a way. And I'll say that. And two weeks later, someone will call me. Yes. With a script. <laughs> someone will call me with a track. And I'll just look at them and be like, all right, so you're telling me it's not time. Fine. Okay, thank you. You know, I just keep it moving. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know don't my think life. I'm ever going to stop. I have, I, and you can't, because like, sometimes I stop um, out of more, not myself, but like, am I giving too much of myself to this? And then, or, or, or like I said, when mm. I get the rejections, you know, when I get rejections, sometimes it, it like hammers me, like, like what's going on? I thought, like, I feel this is hot, <laughs> you know? So my right, wife right, and, right. and cat will go, well, what do you, one time she told me what, what do you, what is success? Like, and and that that was that the part. question because that that brings you back to eight year old you or the first time you fell in love with the arts and you didn't do it for money, you didn't do it for fame, you did it because you loved it. And when you're doing something you love, no matter whatever rewards, the the biggest reward is that you're doing something you love. And I have to remind myself that I forget it sometimes, and I need yep. people like her. And and you know, and then sometimes she'll tell me, and I'm like, and I don't hear it. And then she came back to me. She goes, I want you to know that Peggy just told me the same thing. What do you, what do you feel success is? <laughs> and then you, you thank God, like, like, like my Padrino said, the Orish, the Orishas will talk to you through other people, through other things, a song on the radio, a commercial, you know, and when you, and the, like you said, every time you get in that hole, they, the, these things come and pull you back up. You know, and like you, hearing you in the morning, it Absolutely. helps, it helps you pull it back Absolutely. up, you know, and, and and I thank you for that. What What's something you would want to give up or change? What I would love to give up is my job. I got two more years to retire. <laughs> I, wish I, could retire <laughs> I wish I could say that. Time, what I like to do, you know, um, what would I, I wouldn't give up anything. You know why? Because. I got to a place where I realized that all these things that I do still help keep me clean. They still help me stay grounded. Yeah. They still keep me humble. They really, really do. Just when I think that I'm not enough, just when I think that I may be too much, just when I think that I don't know nothing, you know, because the imposter syndrome is real, even with 25 years of this, this business. Mm -hmm. These things that I do and what I get back, grounds me and lets me know no papito you are exactly what you are and what you need to be at the moment in your life and i'm like all right god i got you got you message received you are, sir man challenged or not because we are challenged man just just being oh brown. yes just just being brown with challenge just being brown black that's absolutely you know yeah woman absolutely we're challenged yep. but i i can yep. tell you you are an amazing person. Your talent is beyond the stars. And, and I'm so glad to know you. I feel Thank blessed you so to much. know you. But um, Thank you. <laughs> what? Well, I get mad happy when I say El David. I always be like El David. And I smile. <laughs> oh, one bad motherfucker, baby. Thank you. Oh, definitely, you know what? Thank you. I bad. appreciate Absolutely. that. I appreciate that. And I, and I do constantly. You, If you ever hear any of my interviews that people interview me, I always say it's because of you. Um, there's oh a lot God, of people. There's a lot of people that shape me outside of myself, and you are one of them. Uh, it's it's you, Kat, um, Peggy, people that uh, Vanessa, people that that weren't afraid to tell me shit was not there, you know. Because when you when you got when you but got we people, say it because let me tell you that we say it because we see your potential. You absolutely. You 
you have certain pieces that I'd be like, yo, he just ate that. I had no idea how he left people and walked off the stage. I'm like, if he stood back, you would see people be like this. <laughs> Thank you, man. I've seen that reaction from your pieces where, where people have sat back and then you got on stage and you started spitting and they go. <laughs> you know what? Can I tell you something? Before you, before, you, before you shaped me in my rhythm, I'm going to put it that way because I wasn't embracing my inner rhythm. Before you, before you told me to find that rhythm and, and to slow down and, and feel that, when you told me to put my hand on my heart and I felt stupid, right? Because what the hell is that? But that was everything. When you are, when you are reciting to the rhythm in your heart, that changed everything for me. So I can no, tell you okay. that- I can tell you, I've read pieces now Say that, that. When, I, when I read back then, I didn't get a response like I do now. Why? Because now they feel it more because I'm doing it to that rhythm, to that pace of my, of my inner rhythm. And I, I mean, that was you. So I thank you, man. But I'll be, the rhythm, your heart will always tell you where you're at, but your feelings will dictate where you're going. Remember that. This, you see, this guy is like he's Gandhi. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not Remember Gandhi. That, he's not Gandhi. So he's when you Ga went like he's with your heart, <laughs> right, right, Gandhi. <laughs> when you put your hand on your heart, your heart's gonna tell you about your truth, but your feelings are gonna dictate how yeah. you're gonna speak that truth. And that's when the people be like, because when truth is spoken, someone has to be affected by that truth. Mm -hmm. Someone has to be either that or your dad has to. Yes, has I to. mean. And when we and did your this, poetry comes from a place of truth. You're one of the very few poets that writes truth. So many poets now are like, you know, ebony skies and purple <laughs> land. <laughs> and like, I don't know that. What's that? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Tell me a song that makes you cry <laughs> and one that and one that lifts you up. The song that makes me cry. Is um, anything from La Lupe? Because mm. it automatically brings me back to my mom. And yeah. any song that lifts me up, uh, the brand new heavies. Mm. Never stop, never giving up, never stop. Oh, they don't, they don't know what you're talking about. They don't know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> brand new heavies and um, um and anything from Tina Marie lifts me up. Oh, y'all don't know. Yeah, see, real sing. Ooh, Tina Marie. Square Biz. Uh, lady uh, woo, I was so high. But let me tell you something. That song was, I remember um, Ken Swift of the Rocksteady crew. He oh my a, God. He did a graffiti piece. He wrote Square Biz on it. And I was like, I was, I was in uh, junior high school at the time, but it was so cool to me to see a hip hopper loving that kind of R&B music. You know, I thought that was dope. Oh, she's one of the baddest bitches in the game. Yeah, she. Um, I'm gonna tell you. Chance. <clears throat> to this day, I mean, Christina Aguilera, she could fuck with her, but not many people could fuck with that voice, man. Or, I mean, nah. maybe Aretha, nah. of course, Aretha Franklin, but but uh, oh my God, that Tina Marie, voice was sick. Tina Marie, not only did she write, she composed and wrote all of the instruments. Yeah, and well, then she, she said, piece, she wrote or she wrote the drum. Music sheet. Wow! The piano music, I didn't know that. The horn music sheet. Yes, she did all of that. And, she and when she got with her ass down, off, by the way, all of it, all of it. And I'm, I'm a huge Tina Marie fan. I mean, I, me too. There's me not many too. artists that can do it. And then, know. and then she rapped. Y'all, you might not know that she did a Hell little yeah. rap. You know? And you know what that's I'm me. I'm on a hip hip <laughs> to the key. Yes, you know yes, that's me. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, remember when she came out, they didn't put her face on the album cover mm. because she was a white woman. Yes, and everybody yes. thought she was black. So when her second album came out and they put the white woman's face, she became even bigger, and people went to see if this white woman can really yeah. sing like that. And she sure the fuck did. But and she was and she was <laughs> good did. people, and she was good people. Oh, she, yes, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you, oh yeah, absolutely. Those those, absolutely. those were the days, man. Like I, I, I music ain't the same, puppy. And, very few people 
I hear now of artists now that I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Very few, very, very few. Very, I remember very few. I was playing, I was playing, yum, yum, give me some of that tang, tang, that boogie bang, let's rock the house, let's rock the house. You got to get that. And you went, oh, and I you, got you, and you, yeah, you came up to me, you went, Bohannon? And I was like, motherfucker, nobody ever knows what song. I, because I, at the end of my shows, I will play my shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I was like, this is a man after my own heart. Love like, that. <laughs> yep. What are you most proud of? Absolutely. I was like, we have the same music taste. Yes. Yes. What are you most proud of? Really? Being a Santero. Ooh, and we didn't talk much about that. Yes. Yes. And that's, you don't, you don't talk about that much. No, I you don't. You, no, that's your, you that's your I life. I love that's... you. I love you for knowing that about me, bro. <laughs> I love that because people don't know that shit. And you know that and you'd be like, hmm, Julie don't be talking about that a lot. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell uh, you, I, t- tonight I thought, like, should I ask him about that? And I, I, I felt like you, you're so private about it. I know you've done that. Um, You've done one Orisha song, House Track. Yeah, um, Django. Yeah, but but as far as just speaking about it, I don't hear you much. So I was like, maybe I, maybe I'll let him let him decide if he wants to talk about that. You know, um, I'm at a point now as a um, as a santero. I have 19 years. Um, there's a new love for it, and um, I'm doing a lot of heavy studying in it, and it's just brought me such a joy. Like when I tell you a joy. And David, it has brought me such a joy. It's very big in my ear. I hear it a lot. Um, I've saved a lot of lives. No, and yeah, um, I'm sure. It made me feel to a point where I was like, yo, I'm the child of a king. A king chose me to be his kid, so I got to be yeah. somebody. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that has made a difference in my life thinking like that. You know what I mean? And that's the one thing me and Kat miss the most because... Um, when we moved here, like our house doesn't, is not here. It's in New York. And, wow. you know, and so we were like, we we're, we're, and then the pandemic happened. So we was like, you know, let's go, let's go look for a sister, Ile, and let's see if we, cause it, it, it was one of the things that kept us rejuvenated. And, you know, no matter what's going on in your life after a tambor, after, you know, you, you just come back. So yeah, man. Like you, you feel the mm-hmm. wind in your soul, you know, it's just beautiful. And, and, I, and, I, and I miss that so much. Um, and that, that's our, the biggest part of our life. And we do all our works here. You know, we do our bowls and stuff. But it's nothing like the community of, of, of the Santero community, you know, that's there with you, you know, and to be able to, to commune, you know. But so I, and I love spirit, that. Share spirit, share love, share the music. And just Yeah. Yeah, and and that's a, that's another big part of you that you know people see. Yes. Like I said, you wear you wear so many hats, right? Um, acting, writing, directing, singing, and and then and then this, but nobody, a lot of people don't know about this because you don't really speak on it much, you know. I did a show not so long. Um, I did a truly vision at the New York weekend to um in November, mm-hmm. no, in October. Um, there was a lady in the audience who felt different and she came up to me and she was like can I ask you a question I said sure she goes you're a spiritist and I was like yeah she goes you're a medium I go yeah she goes can you please take the time out to speak to me I think that you have the solution that I need nice. and I just was funny because I was like okay it's getting to a point where now people can feel it all right so you mm-hmm. know and I'm not gonna deny it you know what I mean because me right. and you know that it's spirit calls spirit calls you better do that yeah. you know what I mean if they're allowing me to have a blessed life, if they're allowing me to have all this success to do God's work once in a blue, that's not asking much. You know what no. I mean? One and hand washes it, the other, straight up. I like that, especially because a lot of people who have God children, who have even just that that title, that crown, right? They don't know what, they don't speak like you just said, right? They they say, I helped this person. I did this. They don't, they don't ever say like you did that the spirit's talking to them. And which is the correct thing to say, right? Like yeah. um, if I tell, if, if, if somebody comes to me and says something, and when it comes to that, when it comes to Ocha, I don't, it's never me. 
right? It's never me. It's no. It's the spirit or the reason that's speaking not. through you. But there's people that they want to feel they want that they have that yeah. God syndrome, and those are the people that are out there saying, "Here, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that." You don't do that, and that that shows a purity mm-hmm. to me in you, you know, for for this faith. You know, you don't try to be a, a demigod. You know what I mean? But it, 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 you're so right about that. It, it, but you know what helps us understand that? I noticed that people who have gone through addiction, people who have been abused, when they find something that they can put their faith in, they get to it in a much more different way than someone who hasn't. Right, right. Yeah, you know, absolutely. someone like us, we know it can be really worse. So keep your ass humble. You know what I mean? Yeah, As yeah. opposed to somebody who thinks they know everything, they be like, "No, yo lo hago," and I'm like, "No, you didn't do nothing, Papa. You were used. I want you to know that." You're yeah, the messenger. You, know, you mentioned earlier. Um, um, th- that's really important what you just said. You mentioned earlier that that, that this uh, the faith kind of you said you said the faith. You didn't mention it like I'm saying. You didn't. That's why I'm pulling it out of you. But it saved you, right? And um. A lot of people don't understand that, you know, like it's, it's not you, a lot of people came into this good. I got no problems, but it's so popular. I want to know about it or, oh man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a poet. This faith is popular in my community. I want to be in, (laughs) you know, they didn't do it. They didn't, they didn't have to climb out of holes like me and you did where we, we, we needed it. And it actually saved us. We didn't look for it. I didn't look for it. It came to me, you know. And there's a lot of no, people that look no, for you're it. Not supposed to. Which, yes. And, and 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 that's why I I wasn't gonna pull it out of you, but I I felt that about you because <clears throat> because you don't speak on it much. And and that's the difference. With I'm not and I'm not knocking people for looking for it. I get it. It's it's a it's a it's a powerful face. So some people right. are pulled to it, so they look for it. But it does take something. It does give you more experience to speak when you didn't look for it. When you, when you, when it came to you because it saved you. It's different. It is different. But we're at the fun part. We're at the no cap ten pack, and that's where I give you ten ten choices. You gotta just say, you gotta pick one or the other. I'm gonna give you the, um, I'm gonna give you choices, and you just let me know which one you favor. Ready? Okay. Go. All right, no tap ten pack. Celia or La Lupe? La Lupe. Show me love, Robin S. Or the whistle song, Frankie Knuckles. Whistle song, Frankie. A good movie or a good song? A good song. Romance or comedy? Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn or Bronx? Brooklyn. <laughs> I knew it. I knew. Look what he did. <laughs> He's being he's being diplomatic. <laughs> uh, but the Bronx been good to you, so. Um, Rita Morena or the Bronx, Salma Hayek? I love, but I was born in Brooklyn. I know, I know. I'm a Brooklyn girl all day, baby. <laughs> Rita Morena or Salma Hayek? <clears throat> Rita Morena. Palladium or limelight? Limelight. Richard Pryor or Eddie Murphy? Richard. Salsa, merengue, or rumba? Salsa. Boxers or briefs? Briefs. <laughs> That's it. You did it. <laughs> All right. So, some of them were tough. Some of them were tough. I was like, don't think, don't overthink it. You're just say it. Uh, I say, when I say Brooklyn and Bronx, he's going to get mad. <laughs> so now, um, the floor is yours, but before you do that, do you want to plug anything or give your handles out? I know you're on TikTok. What's your TikTok handle? Your Facebook handle? My TikTok is Andre Chulisi. Um, my handle on Instagram is Chuli Boo. Um, of course, on Facebook, Andre Chulisi Rodriguez. Um, again, February 10th, my next house joint comes out. It's a Spanish house song. February and March 18th, Chuli Vision will be having its residency. In Jersey, um, we have a cabaret spot across the street from the Prudential mm. Center. Look at that. Um, and you heard it. I know you teased it last week, but then you now you heard it first. <laughs> well, 
What else? Right. Man? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you got you got two um, books you're writing. It's coming out. They're going to be edited by El David. Yeah. Go ahead, um, continue. <laughs> part two of Slip Trips and Falls, and then I'm actually writing. And I I, I promise that when it comes out, I'm mailing you the first copy. Yes. I'm writing the first spirit <laughs> book about spiritism. Ooh, I like that. Oh, let me tell you, that's going to come out. The backlash is going to be serious, boy. And I'm ready for it. I'm like, I'm all for the shits, my man. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually now, as we speak, if everything goes off well, but in one more month, I will have a jazz band. What? I'm excited. I'm so excited. Upright bass, the piano, and a drummer. Ooh. Is it the I'm gonna go into the studio and do a jazz album, like a real jazz album? Is it the electric upright bass? Yes. Ooh, yes. I'm digging that. Boom, 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 boom. With that real, real bass that vibrates. Yeah, absolutely. I'm thinking, that's you're a musician. That's yeah, honey, you're a crazy. musician. You said that. I was like, yeah, he's a bass lover. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I and love the upright bass. Studio, I want to do a real, real jazz album. Some Nina, some Billy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. I want to do something. And I'm going to see if um, I'm going to do some loop and jazz. Mm. Well, she was jazz. Right. So, well, yeah, but she was Latin jazz, but I'm going to yeah. do it jazz jazz. Uh, yeah, like we're bringing it to the other side nice. of the spectrum. Yes, yeah, see yeah. how that works. Yeah, I'm excited, definitely, man. Definitely. I want to hear that. That's going to be a sick. You got I'm sure you're going to put an album out, so I can't wait to hear that. I, 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 yeah, you got to perform a bit first. Yeah. I get it, but I'm dying to hear it, man. I'm in here in Chicago, so for me to hear it, you're gonna have to put some recordings out, man. Mm -hmm. So now you There's have EP. what? It's gonna be an EP. Nice. I'm excited. I'm ex yo. That's gonna be dope. I can't wait, man. Now yo, I'm. I'm that's one of my dreams. That that was my last on the bucket list. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was my last thing on the bucket list. A residency and a jazz band. That was my last yes. thing on my bucket list. And I got it this year. And you deserve that. You deserve that, man. For real. <laughs> Thank and you. A, re a residency is perfect for you. You said you're going to retire soon. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to retire. But if I, if I, that would be a dream for me to be able to stop working, uh, do what I love every Every week, oh my God, I'd be in heaven. The discipline is crazy, heaven. though. You have to be disciplined. I have to train myself before. As, as I'm retiring, I'm starting to train myself. Because if you don't, you, you retire and be like, what am I doing? So I'm starting to like really discipline myself yeah. on my days off, get up early, do this, do that. So like that, I, I fall into the rut, right, at, right into it. I don't want to chop it up and enjoy it. I just want to fall right into it. You know, Go one thing right into the other. You're gonna be a beast when you retire. Are you kidding me? I can't wait. You're giving to give all of yourself to that. Ooh, baby, that's exactly what I think. Exactly what you said. I was like, man, if I could just sit and write mm. and sing and create, man. Yes. Listen. When I when I got my record deal with the the major record label that I'm not allowed to uh, mention, um, it was because I was 24 hours doing that, man. You know, it was I was just that was it. Eat, breathe that. You and if when you retire, that's what you're gonna be. Just like, ah, wow. I've worked my way up to jazz. A lot of people don't know mm -hmm. that my most loving music that I love house music because there's no um, there's no constraint to house music. Mm -hmm. It's not stanza, bridge, verse, chorus. You can go anywhere you want, which is why I love to sing house music. But my biggest, biggest, biggest love is jazz. I love Man. jazz. It's the only music I could sing that my heart connects to it automatically. I'm, I have no fear. I don't hesitate. I'm not scared. I'm not worried about, mm -hmm. am I hitting this note right? It's just something that when I open yeah. my mouth, and David, it just, yeah. it just, it just goes. And I, and I think my voice is made for jazz. I've always said that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, and the cigarettes, <laughs> I know, I know it's a vice, but it just goes. <laughs> it just goes. Whiskey, baby. I'll be like, <laughs> let me tell you a tale. It's just the goes with the thing, and I'm like, let's do this shit, you know. Una taza de café y un cigarrillo. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love you, man. So, I miss you, bro, man. I wish too, I was in man. Chicago, bro. Well, when you, I know this you're gonna be back here so again. Fucking dope. 
It was nice to see you when you came here before. You did growing up in Gonzalez here. We came to see you. That was awesome. And it poured. We had some good Mexican food. Yes, you did. Remember when it poured that day? And then we found that great place to eat food. That shit was so good. They changed the owners, not as good anymore. <laughs> no, it's not there. It was. It's there, but new owners, food is not the same. Wow. So you have the floor, if you want, to do whatever you wow. want right now. Wow. You know, up to you. Or we could say good night. I don't have nothing, puppy. I'm just in the works. I'm <laughs> quiet. I'm metal. I'm, you know, no I'm enjoying problem. you. Like, I'm, let me yes. tell you, I've done a lot of these. Uh-huh. I, I'm gonna say you're one of the best ones I've had the most fun with. Ah, thank you, man. And that's an honest thing. And you thing. know what? The other thank ones you. were so formal. I was like, oh, okay, they want the they want the um the actor Julissi with you. I just felt <laughs> like, yo, what's up? No, you we want to you know what? When we did this, the one thing Kat said was we want to feel like um we're throwing a few back with our compi. <laughs> you know, just that's, and that's what I felt like. <laughs> you saw me have my coffee, yeah. I have my sitting, I'm like, oh, hey, my boy, hey, my you were doing it at the Grand Cafe. Yeah. Well, thank I you. I enjoyed this. This is something that I needed. Man, me too, man. And this is the way to kick off my new year. So I give it up. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate thank you. you so much. Thank you, man. Papi. I want to wish you all the success. Keep on keeping on, bro. Even when it seems bleak, there's a purpose for it. Just at least do it to find out what the main purpose was. If you ever have the blues, you'll be like, I'm over this, but I don't know the <laughs> purpose. But let me keep doing it until I get the purpose. Then I'll be able to say, Jack. Thank You're you. You're doing hey. a great job. I'm very proud of you, man. Very proud I'm, of you. Oh, and that one joint you played, I don't give a fuck. Oh, that shit is hot. Uh, thank you. That's me and Vanessa and Kat. Uh, really? Yeah. That was Vanessa, Vanessa and Kat? That was Vanessa no. and Kat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. That just blew my head off right now. Yes. Hey, it's everybody dope. who's here, dope. we got hundreds of people watching you live, and we got a few people here in our intimate room. If y'all could just say good night and hello and good night to uh, the beautiful Andre. John, Chalice. Chance, Severo, I love you. Cat, I love you, mommy. Keep doing your thing. Sabrina, Miss, Miss Sabrina, Miss, Miss Sabrina Lee Oscar, darling. Thank you, my love. Thank you for coming in. You are <laughs> such a precious one. I see you guys very soon in the cup, man. I'll Love see you guys back, very Trimacy. soon. John, John just sent you love. I know. I know I heard him. He's such he a good sound, boy. He doesn't sound happy today, right? He no, like he's that. just very emotional when he talks to me like that. <laughs> I love you very much, actually. <laughs> he always has a different voice for me, always. Cat oh, you, he brings out the kiss. sexy, sensitive out of me. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> yo, Chance got his Barry White on. Oh, my. I'm, I'm sorry. His um, Barrito, Barrito Blanco, he got on. Nice. And Cat, Cat threw your kiss. And my kids going to say goodnight? Where are my kids? Oh, unmute you. My bad. People are trying to talk to you, and I, and I got to mute <laughs> unmute you gotta unmute yourself anyway she doesn't know how to work zoom we need <laughs> we need training <laughs> well anyway thank you so much my brother i love you and we're gonna thank you gonna, my brother i love you we're gonna go I'll out see you soon. we're gonna go out with Ulysses. like i said his eight minute song <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> but it's amazing i love you Thank you all for watching. Love you, we got hundreds of people watching you live right now. Um, I'm going to go on your page and see all the reactions on there because I haven't seen it. Yeah, and I'm going to and I'm going to drop it on YouTube in, um, in, in, in about by tomorrow. I'll drop it on there too. The whole thing will be there. So let yeah, me know what's up. All right. Love you. Peace out, people. Love you guys. Everyone be good.